Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Dr. Bo Pierce is a 2000 Palmer Chiropractic West College graduate and second generation chiropractor who's been exposed to the idea of total wellness for over three decades. He represents an emerging digital generation that's provided social networking and online connectivity that translates into growth and strength. He's the founder of Circle of Docs, the online network for the chiropractic profession, and his expertise in digital community building paired with his medical background has catapulted him to be an in-demand speaker and lecturer. He's also a competitive Ironman triathlete and was quarterback for the Spartans at San Jose University, where he earned degrees in both kinesiology and pre-medical science. His practice is located in Santa Maria, California, and I want to take a second and go ahead and welcome Dr. Bo Pierce. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me on the podcast today. I'm excited to uh, hopefully bring some value to your listeners and uh, elevate the chiropractic profession. Thank you so much for being on today. Go ahead and feel free to fill in any gaps that I missed in your bio. Oh, man, I think that was uh, too much of a, a mouthful to start with, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> hey, I'm chiropractor number one. Um, and number two, I am a, definitely a family man to my beautiful wife and my two kids. Everything else kind of fills in. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about the origin of Circle of Docs. How did that come about? Well, I'll tell you what. In not so many words, I was a really great networker at the school I went to of Palmer West. You know, it all started with uh, basically, well, I'll be honest with you. I wanted help with my classes and the tests that I were taking. When I was at Palmer, Back in the day, we didn't have Dropbox. We didn't have any of this other stuff. So we actually uh, copied all of our notes to a disk. And we had an ability where we had to go ask the class above us for their disk. And rightly so, the class below us to that disk. Now, like anything else in school, you know, sometimes you have to barter and beg or, you know, Maybe after a few six packs may have to run across the table to one another <laughs> to get that disc. So in school, I helped basically create this little website where we uploaded a lot of that information so the students could start sharing it amongst one another. And it was amazing. Uh, the we, we shared notes. We helped each other out. And actually, it wasn't until the last couple semesters when I started to take my national boards where I started to collaborate with other students outside of our four walls of Palmer West. And it really kind of hit me like, wow, we should be collaborating all across the world. And we should be helping one another get through school and then help each other get into practice and be successful. So when I got out of practice, I was lucky enough and am still lucky enough to practice with my father, who's been in practice for 35 years now. And I started to get a lot of emails from my classmates and friends. And they were saying this, Bo, what do I do? How do I open a business? How do I even start attracting new patients? How do I, you know, what are my treatment protocols? What are my treatment plans? And sadly to say, I believe most of our chiropractic uh, colleges right now are failing miserably in this area. They are basically grooming us just to get through national boards and tick a few boxes and get out. So I was under the mindset of, I don't want to start continuing to answer all these emails. So I started this very, very rudimentary website called circleofdocs.com. I recruited one of my best friends in chiropractic college named Dr. Kyle Knox to help me with it. And we got it up and running. And it was literally nothing more than a very, very rudimentary Facebook thread at this point. Now, this is 2011, mind you. So Facebook was just starting to come onto the scene right now. Not too many users. Well, like anything else, um, after a year or so, my business was, was full. I had a son. I just got pregnant with, um, my wife got pregnant with our second child. And my uh, friend that helped me, Dr. Kyle, had the same thing. Our, our businesses were crazy. So I just decided, you know what, now is not the time to continue this venture. So I just kind of shut down COD. I didn't kill it. I just kind of said, you know what, I'm not going to do much with it right now. So it lay dormant there for a couple of years. And then um, in a lot of ways, I, I didn't know what to do with that. I knew practice was great, but I also had this yearning to help other doctors on a bigger level. So through very fortunate circumstances, kind of through a friend of a friend of a friend type of thing, I heard that Dr. Patrick Gentempo had um, started his holding company called Action Potential Holdings. And I got an opportunity to um, basically pitch him the idea of COD. Mm. And... Uh, I didn't even know what to say, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, like I said, second generation Cairo. And 
pitching an idea to Dr. Jim Temple was such a big thing to me. And I mean, so I listened and learned everything I could. My, my, my father had been to the mountaintop, right? What they did with CLA and all this other stuff. So uh-huh. I just went out there and I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to put my best foot forward and we're going to see where it goes. And when I told them my vision of what I wanted to do with COD and how I believed it could, number one, elevate the profession, and number two, help serve many millions of people around the world, his jaw kind of hit the ground. And he said, this hasn't been done before. And I said, no, you know, I, I, I don't think it's ever been done before. I've never seen it. And he bought in from day one. And, you know, the rest is, so to speak, history. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, people always ask me, well, how did you get Dr. Jin Tempo to come on board? And to be honest, I can say, I don't know. It's kind of, I guess it's a God <laughs> thing, you know? Sometimes those things come and land in your lap and you have no idea and you feel so unqualified to be there, but you just have to embrace and accept it and, you know, do the best that you can. Well, I was looking at the site just the other day and now I've noticed it's expanded and got input from quite a few docs. Who's all on board these days? Well, our general community served over 10,000 doctors. I don't even know what the numbers are. I think it's 10, 000, you know, a little over 10,000 doctors have signed up and registered. COD is a completely free community, which means, you know, you don't have to pay anything. You just, you can go, you can absorb materials. All that we ask is that you simply sign up, use your Facebook, log in, sign up. And what that does for us is it allows us to um, start to have a better relationship with you. You can start com- uh, communicating in our community sections. You can post, you can ask questions, you can... Uh, share files across the board, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea behind this is this. You know, when I was really kind of storming this idea of creating COD, I almost named it DC Island. And here's why I say that. I feel like most chiropractors, once you get out into practice, you're literally on an island by yourself. Mm -hmm. You have no other way to connect to other doctors. Now, there's Facebook, absolutely. But Facebook doesn't provide great content. It doesn't provide what we do in the trenches every single day. Not to mention, if you post on Facebook, most of the time, some of your friends aren't chiropractors. So they're not going to see what you're posting about. Nor do they really care about, hey, check out this lateral x-ray of C1 and tell me if you see a problem. right? Right. So I wanted to create this community where doctors could do that. So with the help of Dr. Jin Tempo, he was amazing in helping to leverage some of his contacts that he had. And we were able to get in front of them and say, hey, look, we're building this community. We would love for you to come on board and help to contribute. That's all that we ask. You know, we, we want to help you get your word about your products, your services, the things that you're doing to help other doctors, help students in the profession. And let's link arms because, you know, the rising tide raises all ships if we do it the right way. If not, we'll sink. So, you know, I was so gracious in him really helping and standing by and, you know, I've been literally um, blown over by the amount of people that have joined in and are willing to contribute and really helping our profession grow. Yeah, for anyone listening, if you have not looked at the website, and we'll, we'll give that uh, domain name in here in a bit, um, there's a lot of information there. Uh, you could literally spend hours um, really learning about every aspect of the business side of being a chiropractor, and it looks like this, this practice side as well. I mean, it's it's dense with a lot of info. Yeah, it's really great. And then I can throw a little tip for your, your readers out here. The number one, I think the most hidden feature of COD is actually our research area. And um, we have, I think, well over 5,000 research papers that have been published on COD, where we have uh, some of our members and some of our contributors basically contributing articles. Everybody from like Mark and Krista that you talked about, to uh, Dr. T. Harrison, to Joe Ferrantelli, to uh, Dr. Chris Kent is the person that helps to um, curate a lot of those uh, articles. And you can literally go on COD and type in any single term, and it'll pop up some research articles for you. So... You know, if you want to look at migraine or if you want to look at low back pain or disc herniation, I mean, literally any topic that we see in our profession, you go in there, type it in the search bar, and you will get a very robust um, compilation of the research that's out there in today's market. Nice. Let's switch gears. I want to talk to you a little bit about social media that you mentioned. Um, Besides Facebook, uh, Twitter, that sort of thing. What else are you coming across that chiropractors are using to spread their message and, and to get uh, to find more patients and really to serve more people? You know, I think that really comes down to a little bit of a slanted question. And I say that by this. I think every doctor needs to figure out where their demographics hanging out. You know, I will say this. In my practice, I'm a family practice. We have a, bit, a great, robust uh, practice here on the Central Coast. I look at the data, I look at the analytics, and I would say over 85% of our practice members are using Facebook. So that's where I spend a lot of my time. 
right? You know, I think if you have a very young generation, um, I, I know uh, Dr. Tony Evil and David Jackson, they have a really crazy great, uh, they're peds doctors, they're all about that. Um, they're spending most of their time over on Snapchat. Why? Because that's where their demographic hangs out, you know? If you have a real cerebral group, there are tons into content, some, maybe people over on Twitter. You know, obviously Instagram's kind of becoming a big thing, but I think for doctors that are listening to this, you really have to start asking your patients, where are you hanging out? You know, where are you being social? And wherever they're social, you need to be social and be in front of them. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. One thing that I've uh, seen lately that I'm pretty excited about is Facebook Live and Periscope. Um, have you used those sorts of things? And do you know if uh, doctors are starting to incorporate that into their social media presence? Yeah, actually, I just wrote an article called on this probably last month on Circle of Docs. And I think it's like 10 reasons why every chiropractor should be using Facebook Live. And you're absolutely tr- you're absolutely correct. I am using Facebook Live. I like to probably use it at least once a week. Um, sometimes I'll use it twice a week. And it's a really great way to, number one, get instant feedback from your community. You know, get up there and talk about something chiropractic. People always ask me, well, what do I talk about on Facebook Live? Um, you know, the basic, most easiest thing, talk about chiropractic, obviously, right. but just pick a case from a case that you have that week and get up there and share about it. Obviously, you know, live in the world of HIPAA, so you're not sharing the person's name and address, right. but you know, I just did one last week, um, on a person that had, um, they came in with what they were told was bilateral carpal tunnel. And, you know, I'm like, bilateral carpal tunnel, what, are you serious? Right. So we had this back and forth discussion a little bit with some of my patients, and we related it always back to the spine, you know, C5, C6, where the nerve roots come from, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I will say this, though. The best thing that I've ever done with Facebook Live, and I'll share this with your members. I haven't shared it with anybody else, is that um, we went through a process of hiring a new staff member for my practice. I mean, we did it all. They, or we did it all. Uh, Craigslist, ZipRecruiter, all this other, you know, stuff. And one day, my staff says, well, why don't you just do a Facebook Live and boost it for a little bit of money, and let's see what it turns out like. So we did, and I was blown away by the response. I tell you, we had over 75 different people apply for the job after we posted this, wow. and I probably got, man, we get 30 or 40 messages, practice messages from people saying, I want to come work for you. I saw your guys' Facebook Live. It's exactly the type of place that I want to work. How do I do it? And I think that there's so much leverage there for doctors now to, you know, not only to, you know, trying to find another staff member, what have you, but really being able to connect with your community. And as chiropractors, that's the biggest thing that we need to do, guys. People are scared to death sometimes if you come to a chiropractor because they don't know what's going to happen once they get inside your four walls. So you need to be able to bring what happens inside, outside, and put it on a platform that they use on a frequent basis. Well, aside from live streaming, is there anything else you've seen recently that is another game changer in the world of social media? Oh, I think the quote cards is a, is a really great thing right now. You know, what Jason Deitch is doing over there with Amplified is is he's really on to something. For docs who are listening to this, if you aren't a Amplified member, I would highly encourage you to go over and get there. He has an amazing toolkit where doctors can, you know, download cover images and then you can post every single day. I think that is an amazing thing. Um, you know, I think when you talk about social, the big thing is just to be you, you know, I think, you know, doctors try to live in this box where they try to be so perfect and so hi, my name is Dr. X, Y, and Z, and this is what I do. And that's not social media guys. I mean, I posted a video the other day in my backyard. I have chickens. I have four chickens in a garden and I just posted a video. I was walking to the garden. They started pecking my feet and said, I'll tell you what. I posted that video and I had more patients come in talking about that video than I did a video on sciatica. (laughs) And guess what? That got the conversation started. And that's all we want as chiropractors. Let's get the conversation started and then we can start to relate it and and correlate it to what we do in in the practice, on the tables and, and in chiropractic. Yeah, I can tell you we've seen a really similar thing with our practices. You know, most chiropractors, especially when I see them first starting out, they aren't quite sure what to post or talk about. So they'll talk about, you know, low back pain or something like that. And you might get four likes. But if they go to dinner or uh, we did a town fair and somebody stopped by with their puppy and that goes on there for a little bit, you know, the engagement shoots through the roof. So um, I tell people that I come in contact with, uh, talk chiropractic, but be real and talk about life as well. And you're going to get a lot more penetration out into the marketplace. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, uh, here's another little tip that we've been playing with, and your reader, your listeners will probably like this, is to share things from other businesses within your community. It sounds like such a boring and easy tip, but I'll tell you what, it makes so much sense, guys, because here's why. If you share maybe, you know, we live in wine country down here on the Central Coast. So I live, I practice in California. So there was one of our favorite restaurants where they had one of our patients who was actually a winemaker going and, you know, doing a, a pouring that night where they're going to pour their latest seven reds, right? And so we shared that post from the pay, or from the actual uh, business. It's called C. Naggy Wines. And from the place that they were doing it at, called Far Western Tavern and Grill. And guess what? We had probably 30-something comments off of that, as well as about 15 new likes to my page. Now, what was that? It was just goodwill. Like, hey, that's my patient. Awesome. Oh, yeah, I know they're a winemaker. Awesome. Yeah, hey, I know this person does that. Awesome. Let's all work together. And that's it, guys. That's what social is all about. Chiropractic is social. You know, before social media, what did we do? We went to di- we went to businesses. We introduced ourselves. We got in front of people. We shook shaker servers' hands. We did every all of that. We played politician in a lot of ways. Why aren't we doing the same thing on social media now? Because we should. And guess what? That's how you you know elevate your practice. Their online presence. That's some great advice. I really like that. And you know, it's an old saying: your net worth is your network, or or mm-hmm. network is net worth. But uh, what a great tool that's come about recently to network even better and reach actually a lot more people. Uh, so I love what you're throwing out today. That's fantastic. So let's switch gears here real quick. I want to talk about branding. I've heard both sides of it. Uh, should a chiropractor brand? I mean, you have one location and you're not Nike or Pepsi or anything like that. Um, what are your thoughts? Should a chiropractor brand? Should they put some money and some time into that or just put up the sign that says chiropractor? Why wouldn't you brand? That's my question. You know, I see doctors that are saying, you know, what, what should I do? I mean, are, are you, what do you want to do is the real question. You know, I think, you know, when it comes to branding, there's a difference between a brand and a logo, right? A logo is the pretty thing that goes on the wall. A brand is who you are, right? Are you XYZ chiropractor, family chiropractor, sports chiropractor? What do you want to be known as? You don't have to be Nike. You don't have to be coca-cola or any of these big companies and leveraging what you can do now online for free literally for free is making superstars out of you know people with little to no budget i mean look at take youtube for instance right there's people with youtube channels that have millions and millions and millions of followers and haven't spent a dollar on doing any big advertising campaign why because they really know who who they are and that's who, who their brand is So when doctors say, you know, should I brand, should I not? I don't know. Who are you? And once you start having a better philosophy and clarity around who you are and exactly what your practice is doing, that is your chiropractic brand. Let's talk about this. You you obviously talk uh, to a lot of chiropractors and come in contact with a lot of chiropractors. What sorts of questions, concerns, that sort of thing are you hearing? What's coming up the most often from people who are maybe struggling in practice or not where they want to be? Oh, I think, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is exactly what you said, but how do I get X, Y, Z, you know, and is it new patients? How do I do this? How do I do that? And I think where it starts with is, you know, obviously you have to have some sort of philosophy about what you're doing and why. And until you've really taken the time to sit down and really discover who you are and what your, I guess you would call it your philosophy formula is, you're just going to bounce back and forth to different things. It's one of those cases where, you know, you're constantly trying to put water in a ship that's got holes on the bottom of it. You know, let's plug the holes. Let's figure out why we're not succeeding in certain areas, why your patients aren't staying with you, why your new patient marketing isn't working. And then once you can start filling those holes and figuring out who you are as a chiropractor, what your chiropractic brand is, then you'll start to see a lot of those other things starting to take care of one another. Well, where do you see them missing the boat? Is it on not figuring out quite who they are or is it in their systems? What are they missing out on? I think it's two. I think it's both, to be honest with you. I think um, our chiropractic philosophy, whatever your philosophy is, has been lost in, in, in translation. We have schools that are talking out of both sides of our mouth. We have national organizations, you know. Some some are pushing for drugs. Other ones are trying to stay straight. They're trying, you know, like you said at the beginning of the podcast. The great thing about chiropractic is that we cover such a wide, vast array of services and, and things that we can offer. 
but it's the doctors who can really narrow in on who they are, what their philosophy is, then that clarity helps to drive everything else. You know, it's one of those things where in a world where there's so much um, constant chatter out there, you know, it's the, it's the people that are very crystal clear on exactly who they are and what they do. Those are the ones that we see succeeding. But it's the, the guy that's the jack of all trades. They're not the ones that, that are, are making a, an impression in the world. And I think as a chiropractor, yes, you can offer a lot of services and do a lot of things, but you need to become clear on what you want to do and who you want to serve. And once that happens, then, um, you know, I think the second thing is, is you're right. The systems are a major thing that we are seeing uh, failure in our profession right now. And that's everything. I mean, that's from, you know, obviously everything from marketing to your new patients as they come in to the treatment protocols, as you put them on there, their wellness protocols after that, your nutrition, everything needs to have a system. And we obviously are not prepared for that coming out of school. And um, there's a lot of people that are searching like, oh my gosh, where can I find these systems? Where can I, where can I do that? How do I do that? And that's something that doctors have to have to gain some clarity around. So what should a chiropractor do uh, who is looking for some steps? And this podcast is all about providing some actionable content for people. Uh, let's talk about the new doc first. They're in their last year of school or they just graduated. Uh, what are some action steps they should take right now if they're a little lost? I think if you're in school right now and you're entering your last year, you're kind of having the deer in the headlights experience where you're like, thank God I can see the end of the tunnel. Now, what am I going to do when I get out of that tunnel? So I think the first thing is you got to figure out who you are. So I would tell you to go visit a minimum of 20 offices, spend one day with each of them or a half a day with each of them. Heck, I probably have four or five students every every couple months come in and spend a half day with me and just shadow. Mm. You got to learn who you are. You got to learn what type of practice that you want to have. And then number two, can you make that style of practice, you know, profitable for yourself? We are in business too, guys. You know, I mean, it's great to serve people and charge everyone five bucks, but if you can't pay your life bill at the end of the month and put, uh, you know, a roof over your head, then you're not going to be serving anybody. So you got to find a way to number one, figure out who you are. And number two, how are you going to get compensated for the job that you're doing? I think beyond that, I think, um, you know, you got to start laying down the systems that you're going to want to implement in your practice. What does that look like? You know, what does a day one, day two, day three system look like? And start walking down those steps. I feel like in the world right now, people are searching high and low for chiropractic. They just don't know it. So we've got to use all of the tools that we have at our disposal, like Facebook, like Periscope, to get out there and meet them and talk their talk. And once we, they understand that, hey, we are good guys, we are here to help, then let's start to, you know, implement some of that chiropractic into them, to teach them about how the body has an innate ability to heal, teach them about, you know, the, the foods that you eat and the, and the air that we breathe and the, and the water that we drink. So I think it's, it's not just a simple answer of one thing, it's a multiple things. So tell me a little bit about Circle of Docs in terms of mentorship. Aside from what's on the website, are there paid membership packages or coaching? Um. <laughs> That's such a great question. And, and to be honest, it's something that that we are debating right now. Um, I'll be very clear with you guys. COD was never intended to be a pay-for-play site. It was always a community and an opportunity for doctors to come on and to learn and to share. But like you said, there's lots of different options and lots of different people asking for this. So currently right now, no, we don't have any anything written in stone. Um, we're playing around in, with a few different ideas because obviously there's a lot of doctors who are in the situation that you're, that you're asking right now, and we want to help them. So we'll see what comes about of it, but I'm hoping and willing to do whatever we can to, to help those doctors succeed. What vision do you have for the future of the company? Sounds like maybe some paid uh, coaching, but what else? You know, I think with Circle of Docs, I, I, I have the vision of this, that chiropractic is a very small pr profession with a very big, grandiose ideas. I mean, you go, to, you go to Cal Jam, you go to Parker's, you go to Mile High, you go to all these amazing Focus OKC, you go to all these amazing events, and... I feel like this. I feel that 
what we do has the health, the potential to change the entire demographic of our current healthcare system. I mean, people right now are more sick and tired than they ever have in their entire life, but they just don't know what to do. All they're doing is being bombarded by you know, pharmaceuticals and drugs and surgery and all the stuff that we've known for the past, you know, since 1895 when Didi came out with it. But there's never been an a, a alternative way to turn to say, oh, there is another option. Oh, guess what? Chiropractors do play nice with these other these other groups. Oh, I go to a naturopath. I go to a homeopath. I go to a physical therapist. I go to all of these people. Oh, wait, you guys are all talking the same language. You guys are all talking about the innate ability to heal itself. Hmm, there's something to that. So as, chiroprac- as Circle of Docs continues to evolve in, in the future, what my vision is, is that it really becomes that, a true Circle of Docs. Now, obviously, we were starting in chiropractic because that's who we are. We are chiropractors. And also, our philosophy and our core beliefs and core values of who we are as a company will never change. But I also believe that there's a lot of doctors who don't call themselves quote-unquote chiropractors that believe the exact same thing. So I think if we can start having other doctors and other professions start to join Circle of Docs and start to communicate amongst each other, then guess what? Your net worth is your net worth, just like you said. So in every community... You know, you should say, hey, Bo, or hey, I practice in Santa Maria. Hey, guess what? I practice in a town three minutes away from you. What are you? Oh, I'm an acupuncturist. Oh, I'm a chiropractor. Let's work together. Oh, I'm a naturopath. Yeah, I work with chiropractors all the time, right? So you are now creating your own true circle of docs. And it's all based upon who you are, what your philosophy, who your core values are, and your core beliefs are. And if we can start to do that, then guess what? We're going to start to serve more people, and we're going to start to take this thing, what we call chiropractic, and being really able to make a dent and to change the world. What's really exciting you right now about Circle of Docs or, or anything? Oh, accessibility. I mean, that's got to be it right now. I mean, you look at, I, I sit down and look at the analytics every day practically, and I'm literally shocked. I mean, you know, people always say, oh, you can't scale chiropractic, Bo. Oh, chiropractic can't, can't be big. Um, you know, you're never going to get chiropractors to agree on anything. I say, absolutely right. You're 100% right. But guess what? Online, I can. You know? We look at our, our analytics, and there's no doubt in my mind that we are the number one online community for chiropractic, the number one most read chiropractic website in the world right now. On average, we're usually averaging over 100 countries that are reading COD every single month, hundreds of thousands of page views, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of page turns and unique visitors. I mean, we have 10,000 doctors. No, 10,000 doctors where? No one's got 10,000 doctors right now. You know, we got 10,000 doctors. And they're doing things and they're on and they're reading and they're consuming and they're acting. That's what's so awesome. Last year we did this thing. I did this thing with uh, Jared Yellen over at Synpractic called Hashtag Get Adjusted. And it was a movement where all people did was they shot a video, they took a picture, and they used the hashtag Get Adjusted. And they posted on social media. We did it for one month long. And here is the results. This is crazy. Over 2 million posts with the, with the term Hashtag Get Adjusted across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 2 million. Wow. Why? Because it's digital. We live in a digital world right now, and we need to embrace that and really kind of ride those coattails because they, guess what? That's how people are consuming media. You know, people aren't reading these print magazines anymore and newspapers. No, we all know that that stuff's dead. We all know that stuff's gone, but you have your iPhone. You have your Android always with you. You're always looking at it, and you're always consuming. So if we can start to use the media that we have, We can change the world. We just have to be smart enough to know how to use the media, how to use our website, how to use our platform to get our message out to the world. Let's talk about success, and let's go a little more general now. When you think of the word success, is there a particular person, um, or or what do you think of when you think of that word? Oh, success, success. Um, uh, I... I think success comes down to a personal belief, to be honest with you. You know, if you've ever seen Dr. Chris Zeno work, success in his mind is seeing a thousand a day. Literally, a thousand people <laughs> like wow. walk through <laughs> their doors of their practice, of their four or five doctors. Wow. You know, I have some of my other friends, um, Dr. Sachin Patel up in Canada. Success to him is seeing 15 people a day, but being able to really take a deep dive into what their chronic diseases are and being able to help them with that. You know, I also see success as a person that's on the road helping helping um, professional athletes. You know, Dr. Troy Van Beesen is a friend of mine. He's the, he's the chiropractor to some of the world's best golfers. So success to him is being able to allow the body to work in a way that allows his athletes to go out there 
and win PGA Tour events. See, that's the great thing about chiropractic is, is that each person can define what their success is. So we just have to be able to create that picture in our mind. And once we have that picture, strive towards working towards that success. Do you have a favorite book that you recommend? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just one. <laughs> a favorite book. Um, I'll tell you right now, my favorite book is um, a book by um, Jen and Simon Floriani, Well-Adjusted Babies. That's probably my current favorite book right now. And the reason I say that is because I have a lot of uh, pregnant moms and young moms that are coming into my practice. I practice in California, which you may or not may or not know is like the hotbed right now of all around the the term vaccination and that SB two seventy seven that was passed. Uh-huh. Yep. You know, so I think there's a lot of people that our eyes are now starting to be open to what's happening and these vaccinations that they're giving these kids and you know seventy one doses of vaccines before. They reach the age of 18 and people are like, wait a second here. Maybe this isn't right. Maybe our kids shouldn't be going in and getting, you know, vaccinated five or six times every six, every six to nine months. Mm-hmm. So people are looking for alternatives right now. I think doctors in California have an amazing opportunity to really kind of stand up right now and say, Hey, look, there is alternatives out there to, you know, your kid not having seven ear infections by the time that they're five years old, not having to have all of these things injected into their body. And I know that over in Australia right now, they're fighting a bitter battle right now around this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Dr. Simon and Dr. Jen are doing over there is really kind of uh, the lighthouse and light beacon, I guess you would say, towards the natural health movement over there. And her book, Well-Adjusted Babies, is kind of flying off the shelves in in my practice because people want to learn. They want to consume. They want to know how to have uh, a natural, healthy pregnancy, how to deliver naturally and healthy. Cesareans are through the, the roof right now. And then once the baby is here, what should they be doing about it? The foods that they should be eating, chiropractic adjustments that they should be receiving, etc. So right now, that's kind of probably one of my favorite books that I have going. Well, we'll definitely link to that in the show notes. Um, as we draw towards a close here, I want to ask you, what's the best business advice you've ever received? Simplicity, probability, and leverage. And I got that from um, my friend Rick Sapio over at Business Finishing School. Um, everything that this guy does, I don't know if you're familiar with business finishing school, but it's actually a product that him and Dr. Patrick and Tempo created, um, where they help young entrepreneurs figure out and create business success. It's almost like a quotient that they use, but it's all around those three words, simplicity, probability, and leverage. You know, your simplicity of what do you deliver? What is your practice do? Do you do chiropractic adjustments? Do you do rehab? Do you do nutrition? Do you do a little of each of those or do you do a lot of one or two of those? Number two, what's the probability of a person getting better doing that? You know, do you have the systems in place? Do you have the things that are set up for success? Just like you go to Subway, right? You go to Subway, you order something, you know exactly what's going to happen during the whole process. And number three, leverage. You know, as a chiropractor, what I, or as a COD person, what I see a lot of chiropractors do is they try to be all things to all people. You know, they're being the back office person. They're answering their phones. They're doing the, the, the ART, the MRT. They're doing the rehab. They're doing nutritional consults. They're calling their patients at the end of the day. They're doing their billing on the weekend, right? Superman syndrome. It's so stupid, right? Hire the right people. Do the right things that, that you do great. And leverage, uh, leverage everything else. So simplicity, probability, and leverage. And for docs, real listeners, if you have not checked out Cairo Finish or Cairo Finishing School or Business Finishing School, sorry, Business Finishing School, I highly recommend that that program. That's probably the best business program that I've seen out, and we've seen a lot of them across. All right, we're going to link to that one too. I want to take a minute and thank you, Dr. Bo Pierce, for being a guest today on the podcast. What is the best way for people to contact you and find out more about Circle of Docs? Well, I think that's it right there, my man. You just go to circleofdocs.com. I'm always over there. Um, obviously, you can check me out on Facebook if you want or my practice, which is Pierce Chiropractic and Sports Injury Center. Um, can I see what we do and kind of ha- how I use social and what I kind of do in posts? I love, you know, I think I have like, I don't know, three or 4,000 quote-unquote friends on Facebook right now. But just check out circleofdocs.com. Become a member. Join. Start interacting with the community. And, you know, I believe that we're all in this together and we're a smaller profession. So let's help one another because we all want to succeed and we all want to help more people in this world. 
Love it. Thank you so much. All right, man. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast. For links to what was discussed in today's episode, check out the show notes at CairoBusinessMojo.com. And be sure to jump on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review if you liked what you heard. We'll see you next time. 